Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are going to be bringing four missions into orbit around Mars in this video. Two of them will have to aero capture, the other two are manually capturing. Uh, this one is a supply mission that also carries the controller for our station. And so it is going to need to rendezvous with the station and hopefully we'll get that done before we uh, need to focus on the landers. Uh, so we've got about 20 days. Mars is right there. And here we see that our capture burn is 852.8 meters per, per second, but that doesn't give us a whole lot to match orbits with our station, so we have to watch out for that. There's Mars Station 1 right there, so let's set that as a target. Um, we're not super duper out of phase, but it's probably bad enough. Once we actually capture, it's probably going to look, well, uh, we seem to be c capturing pretty low right now with this 852 so maybe we want to loosen that up a bit okay yeah it's quite out of phase and we've also got this inclination difference um that periapsis probably isn't in the best location that it could be let me try and make a change to that right now instead of coming in the way we are it looks pretty bad all right i've reconsidered doing any burn right now and instead we are going to do a burn at periapsis or close to it, just a little past it, as it turns out. But uh, after that burn, which is 709 meters per second, which gets us a very loose capture, we're going to do a burn up here uh, to lift our orbit up. So that's 463. So yeah, let's call it 1200 altogether there. And then our relative speed when we intercept the station will be 678 and so that's 1,878 altogether, you know, with the rounding and all. So hopefully that will work out. But, I mean, that leaves us uh, about 200, let's say, in order to actually finish up the rendezvous and dock. So hopefully we can do that. Let me double check our comm line. Might be a little bit dicey over there. Should be okay for a little bit, but we better watch out. So this is probably going to be something like a four to five minute burn. That's what our line of sight back to Earth looks like right now. Okay, and ignition. Nope, throttle's not working. Nice little ring of thrusters. Okay, finishing this up as closely as possible. Okay, let's see. Well, it was always going to be a touchy situation, so we're going to have to correct that one. About 13 days, so that's before the Mars lander comes in, as I wanted. I mean, I don't know what this sort of situation is, but considering we can get that right there, there's no reason for it to, as we get closer to that, randomly show me this. <laughs> that's, that's not necessary. Let's see if some radio will help convince it. A little bit of radio won't do too much harm. Well, I'm afraid I'm just going to have to take what I've got there. 200 kilometers. Well, that's better than 5,000. All right. So that burn is in two days and nine hours. So up we go. So far, so good. And here we go. Again, lifting our orbit up like this so that we're going relatively slow when we meet up with it. And the inclination change part of it and also the radial component won't be too bad. Okay, well, that's the minimum right there. Okay, 161, we'll see what we can do with that. Right now, 687 meter per second difference, and we've got 992, so... Mm, well, let's hope that that's the case. Okay, here we come in for the meetup. Just gonna push that retrograde vector onto the target marker. Okay, well, that's most of the deal done. Now the difference is currently 242, and it seems to stay 242 when we get there. 
and we are going to be approaching at 200 meters now instead of 200 kilometers so that is all good our orbits are still not at all the same but closer closer oh there it is all right final velocity matching burn And we are in render range. And there it goes. Maybe a little tad late. As long as we stay in render range, that's okay. Now, it's theoretically not controlled at this point. If we absolutely need to control it, we could by separating the two parts, undocking them but I don't really want to do that. So we'll see if we can just do the docking without actually controlling it. No lazy way. Those thrusters are all firing at each other, so we don't really want to use those. Let's dock here. And I also don't want to hit it. Okay, slipping on by. Just passing by here. Okay, and it looks like we'll be coming in with nearly 300 meters, sec uh, uh, meters per second to spare. And maybe I should make sure I'm actually controlling from here. Oh no, it's completely wrong. Okay, I have no idea what I was, was controlling from that one. I mean, how oh, strange. Well, I was happy enough with that. Okay, so that's how it looks right now. It's uh, 48.5 tons. And we need to shut off, like, a lot of engines. Okay, hopefully I've gotten all of them, otherwise our next burn is going to be less than efficient. Okay, and we'll want to control from here. Now, this is just for if we want to bring it down, but right now we don't want to bring it down, because we have no idea what orbit everything else is going to end up in. Uh, the, it's when the crew comes that we want to mess with this. For now, it can just stay in its high orbit and we're not going to do anything. As long as the periapsis isn't in the atmosphere, which it is not, uh, it is fine. And yeah, it's going to continue to hang out. It's got center in 62 meters per second, which isn't enough to get all the way down, but it could be enough. Well, it can certainly try and match orbits with Phobos or something. Um, if we really wanted to. Anyway, I'm not going to waste time on that. We've got a lander that's coming in in three days. Let's focus on that. But so far, the revitalization of Mars Station 1 is successful. It seems like we have control. And, well, let's just make sure that we don't make it more than 120 tons, at which point. Uh, I forget if that's the control limit, but it might be 150. But anyway, I don't think we're going to get there. It'll be fine. So next up, the Mars lander. Okay, so here we are with the first Mars lander test, and we just need to get this into orbit, but of course it has to aero capture, hence the heat shield, and that is the trick. It's especially a trick because we're entering the SOI really, really, really slow. Of course, that was intentional, especially for the other missions that I have to propulsively capture because that makes it easier for them to do so. We saw with the previous mission, it only took like 700 meters per second for it to capture. The problem is, that I don't have a whole lot of data for such a slow entry into the SOI, which is what I normally judge by in order to plan the periapsis. Right now, we of course have to correct the periapsis. It's negative 403 kilometers, but what do we correct it to? And I normally jot down the data for the SOI entry, you know, based on the speed that we have here. And unfortunately, we don't have anything that's this slow. Uh, for instance, I have data for 5,027 meter per second SOI entry, and uh, 2,750 is pretty darn close though. That's a 270 day transfer. Unfortunately, the mission that I brought in at that uh, speed was 1.9 tons per meter squared of heat shield. Uh, this mission is three times less than that. It is only 600 uh, kilograms per meter squared of heat shield. So it's a little bit tough to compare with that kind of difference. That one had to capture 
all the way down at 41 kilometers. So we know we don't have to go that low. Uh, we need to go much higher than that. But how much higher is tough to say. Uh, of course, previously we did, I think it was 57, 56 or 57 uh, with uh, other the one-ton missions. But uh, this is twice the mass per area heat shield as those one-ton missions, twice the ballistic coefficient. So we can't go that high. So it's somewhere between 41 and 56. <laughs> but that's uh, it's very sensitive. It's something that you can only budget so much so I'm I'm actually going to save I'm, I'm not sure because I lack data so honors lander capture but I think it's 46 is what I'm going to go for and we don't want atmospheric autopilot so we do want to correct our radial that's what the difference 47 47 it is. We are still getting power. Yeah, when we're time warping, we're still getting power. So that's okay. Okay, so we can't retract these, right? Well, we'll see if they can survive or not. Basically, at periapsis, we don't want to be going more than 5,000 meters per second. The entry speed looks like exactly what I was expecting, about uh, 5,435 was what I had on the heavier test at similar speeds. Oh, things are going bad. Uh, I didn't think it was this worse than the last time. I'm going to have to check on the configurations for this. Uh, oh, oh, God, something's... Oh. Oh, that's not right. The pod overheated? Maybe I shouldn't fizz warp. Uh, maybe the solar panels were conducting, pow uh, conducting heat to it? Shouldn't the solar panels have exploded first, then? Um, hmm. I, I want to try it again without fizz warping, but I don't think it'll make any difference. I'm gonna allow quick loading for now. I guess it must be that these solar panels actually conducted the heat to it. But we'll try once again this time without uh, fizz warping just to see if that makes any difference at all. Oh, well, we'll go for 48, but we weren't really slowing down very dramatically last time. It was still pretty high up in the atmosphere, too. Was the docking port actually overheating, or was it this decoupler that was overheating? I didn't check. Maybe that do docking port was overheating. Maybe it's not good having it connected to the heat shield like this. It's too distracted by the ground glitching to notice what was going on. Should I spin stabilize to hope that that cools us off? Don't know if keeping the antenna out is bad. Oh, we're going going away. Uh. Oh, we're turning. Oh no. Was it because we turned away last time too, or? Well, anyway, clearly this thing is going to explode right now. I don't have much hope that that lander can survive it either, so... We might want to just manually capture the lander. It's only 700 meters per second, after all. Uh, this one, we'll assume that it exploded, and that's how we know that we have to do that. And then we're going to have to try to refuel that lander a bit, maybe. I think that's the way to go. But then again, in that case, will it be able to land on Mars at all? I guess we're going to have to find out. Anyway, for now, I'm just going to leave this be. I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. It was definitely exploding. Uh, we'll turn to the Mars tug, which 
won't have this problem because it's not arrow capturing. And by the way, it was overheating at like 500 Kelvin. 588 Kelvin was the limit for something. All right, here we are with the tug entering Mars's SOI, and it is looking good. The periapsis is about as tight as you would want it to be. And we are going to head to that and capture. And of course, currently it seems like its main goal will be to refuel the lander after the lander does a propulsive capture instead of an aero capture. However, I think before we do that, I'll save the state and test what would happen if it enters the atmosphere, in particular because it can retract its solar panels. So we'll see whether the solar panels were really the culprits in conducting the heat or whether it was some other cause like the pod is just going to explode because it's got 588 Kelvin heat tolerance. But it's behind the heat shield. It shouldn't be like that, right? I mean, it should be safe. Well, the RPWS is running and getting some data. Cosmic Ray Science 2 will be running for a while. It does seem like the stage time is 39 minutes because we have a single AJ-10-190. Hmm... But we definitely don't need all of it. We are very close to the atmosphere, so I'm worried about accidentally having it dip in. Alright, well, let's try to go ahead with it. Well, more or less on time. We just passed periapsis, going back up. We're less than halfway through the burn, but close enough. Okay, that should do the trick. That's good enough for now. We'll let it stand by awaiting further orders. It's a little bit tilted from Phobos, uh, 21 degrees, but we can easily correct that because its apoapsis is very close to the descending node, so that's good. Hopefully the lander will come in in sort of the same way. And yeah, let's take a look at the lander, which, uh, well, first of all, we will be potentially destroying deliberately in order to check test something and then after that we will try and capture it propulsively and then it's gonna have to rendezvous with this okay well here it is our lander and the heat shields there and retractable solar panels interestingly its velocity here at SOI interface is faster than the other mission by quite a lot so we would technically need to go lower uh, on the other hand it has less mass on the same heat shield. It's only 19 tons versus 22. So in that case, we go higher. And right now we do still need to correct it. So I'm going to do that. And we need to bring that in. Not that that's hard, as you can see, it's changing quite a lot right now. And I think I'm going to go with the same 47 and see what happens. Really, no matter what, it probably would have been prudent to refuel this anyway. It might have enough to get back to orbit after landing on the surface, but it's a close call. Okay, we'll call that good enough, but I'll save because we're going to have it go into the atmosphere to test things out, but we're probably going to reload and see about the propulsive capture to save it because we have other things to test, so... Data is coming in from Mars with the science probe that we sent. And at some point we should relocate that to Phobos or Deimos, but it's still got the long duration stuff. I don't think the nine year one is going to finish that we'll probably move it before then, but we'll make sure we get as much of the rest of the stuff in as possible. Okay, so surface positive, retract the solar panels. Wear 20%, by the way. Which is a lot. I mean, it's only been out for, well, I say only, 316 days. It's going to have to wait a while, right? It's going to have to wait a while. Of course, we made sure that the solar panels were way more than needed. Uh, we have to think about that. Okay, atmospheric interface. This time we're not getting the... Oh, surface glitching is over there. Oh, but it's behind us. Okay, but over here it's fine. 
in front of us, it's fine. Maybe that's a good sign. We're definitely a lot faster than last time, too. About 400 meters per second faster. Oh, no, it's overheating, regardless of whether it's turning. And that Apollo docking system, well, it's just all... But it seems like the pod and the Apollo docking system both overheat. So it's just the way it's attached. I, I don't know if uh, capturing first and then trying to bring in is going to help, but anyway, we're going to try to do that. So, okay, well, we should probably jettison the heat shield. It'll get dumped into the atmosphere. I mean, it's possible that we might have wanted it. But before arrow breaking down. But I think we're just gonna use the tug to bring this down and refuel it, so. Okay, well, while we're blowing in that direction, we might as well keep that. And now we've got a periapsis that's out of the atmosphere, so that's good. But yeah, I, I oppose this entire idea of the capsule and docking port getting overheated when they're behind the darn heat shield. I mean, that's just wrong, right? I don't like this sort of heat shield that has that kind of heat conductivity. I mean, maybe I'm missing something you guys can tell me, but I feel like they were on the side of the heat shield that shouldn't be getting hot. Maybe we should just do propulsive capture all the way. However, we have to make sure that after we capture and bring this down to a low orbit, it can survive the heat. 588 Kelvin is not much. Is there a special Mars lander can? Like these are only lunar rated, but they're supposed to be Mars rated lander cans. Maybe that's why they didn't have the Mars program enabled, so... I'm just gravely disappointed. Okay, captured over there, and actually that should be good enough. By any standards. In fact, lower than tug, which I didn't really need it to do, but anyway, we've got only 3,437 here, which is definitely not enough to get back into orbit of Mars after we land, so the tug will have to refuel it. The tug should have the same propellant, MMH and Mon3 and Helium, but let's double check. Yep, it's all MMH, Mon3 and Helium here, so okay. But it doesn't add that much. I mean, it's only 19 tons altogether, this tug. So it'll basically be done after that. All right. Well, we've gotten our missions into orbit around Mars. Well, one obviously died, uh, but otherwise got our missions into orbit around Mars. And we'll see what we can do with them in the future. Though, of course, the most immediate thing is getting the lander and the tug to meet up. And then, of course, I have to plan other things for the next Mars window, especially given what we've seen with the lander exploding in this one. Uh, again, if you guys have any idea what's going on that maybe I don't know or don't understand, uh, please let me know because we certainly don't want this to continue. Maybe it's just a docking port bug and I need to put something in between the heat shield and the docking port and then they'll be safe. I don't know uh, if the can lander can will be safe like that. Or maybe I just can't use that lander can in this if I want to aero capture, or maybe even if I want to land. We will see. Anyway, so uh, rough times here in this particular Mars window. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.